Hi and welcome. This is Michigan's Auto Talk Podcast, and this is episode number 75. Every episode of our Auto Talk Podcast is all about celebrating the automobile, everything automotive. We're also about helping and supporting the car and truck owners across our great state of Michigan. That's you, our listener, we hope. And of course, Michigan is birthplace of everything automotive. Also home for the return, the triumphant return, and the new season of the North American International Auto Show. And uh, we are pleased to welcome back our automotive analyst from CBS News Radio and WWJ News Radio 950 in Detroit, Jeff Gilbert. Jeff, happy September. Happy uh, Auto Show days. Yeah, happy Auto Show. We used to say that in January. So it's happy Auto Show and nice weather. Is that the main vibe as, as we get ready? And, and Media Day was, as we are recording this, it was September 14th. This this episode is airing on September 22nd, uh, just in the middle of the opening of the show, because the show opens publicly, correct me if I'm wrong, the 17th. Is that correct? That's correct. Yep. Okay. I have preview days. They have a big charity preview gala the night before, and it always opens on, on Saturday morning. Okay. So... Is there a sense of, wow, this is kind of cool. We're not going to the show when it's, you know, 21 degrees and sleeting. It's, is there a different spirit about the show happening in the there, fall? Yeah, there, there's a lot of a lot of differences that you're going to see, not just the change of season, but but the whole concept has changed. We're we're, we're talking about a major pivot that they had planned before COVID when they were originally going to go from January to June, then COVID shut everything down, and then they decided to go to September. In the old days, Detroit had become kind of the media auto show where people would come from around the world for new vehicle unveilings. Well, car makers were moving away from those kinds of things before COVID and COVID accelerated that. Mm -hmm. So they have made a major pivot to being a more consumer oriented show. And and September fits in with that. You've got things inside what's now Huntington Place that many people remember as Cobo Center. You have Mm -hmm. things outside in Hart Plaza. The main vehicle displays are inside. Uh, If you are remembering the auto show of the past with a big elaborate double decker displays, that's gone. They're nice displays. If you've been to the Chicago Auto Show, very similar, a little more spacious. The the big screens are there, but they're not building essentially a city inside a convention center like they had before. Yeah. Uh, a lot a lot more space, a lot more tracks to ride on, a lot more opportunities outside to experience vehicles. Don't expect to be wowed by the displays expect to be wowed by the cars because for a lot of people these are vehicles they've not been able to see because dealerships don't have enough of them to have a lot of new vehicles on display and as people are hearing our conversation on september 22nd one of the interesting things this year was the air mobility experience which is the uh, show above the show as they build it um they, they had flight demonstrations with the x turismo i don't know what that is a gravity jet suit icon a5 a hoverboard and uh, was there uh, obviously there had some there had to be some kind of a tie-in jeff gilbert with the auto show with this uh, show above the show if you will Yeah, it's a tie-in with a show trying to reinvent itself and say, hey, we're not just about cars, we're about all forms of mobility, Ah. including air mobility. Uh, We saw that briefly at auto shows before COVID, and yeah, they've got a couple of these things that are like helicopter, airplane, hybrids that uh, they are are going to be doing some overflights over the Detroit River to let people see there's going to be drones. I have not seen it yet. There's been a lot of talk about this jet pack. I guess they're going to debut it uh, as we record this a little bit later. Uh, the presidential visit kind of pushed back some of the air mobility stuff because when a president of the United States is there, the Secret Service doesn't really like stuff flying overhead. So a, a lot of the demonstrations that have been planned for the press day were, were put off because of the presidential visit. So they're trying to throw in different things. You know, they, they also have this big dinosaur exhibit uh, with, uh, you know, people being able to ride through in, in utilities to kind of make it Jurassic Park-like uh, that some people have joked about maybe 
as auto shows change, dinosaurs aren't exactly a good uh, good image, but they're trying to make it cool for families to go, go down, and they're caring a little bit less about the reporter who comes across from Paris to go to the auto show and, and more for the family that comes down from, you know, drives down from Grand Rapids. Yeah, dinosaur and off-road vehicle encounter. See over 80 yep. massive dinosaurs. By the way, as you and are don't listening... forget about the electric monster trucks, too. I mean, they, these are things <laughs> that meant to kind of add a fun family atmosphere, yeah. but, but that those of us in the media don't don't pay any attention to. Yeah, there, there's also, by the way, you can, you can learn all about the things you can see at the North American International Detroit Auto Show at NAIAS.com, NAIAS.com, and it goes through Sunday, September 25th. The Flintmobile will also be there as well. No prehistoric experience would be complete without seeing how the modern Stone Age family, that would, of course, bend the Flintstones, the original Fred Flintstone's car, built by a guy who did a lot of really cool modified vehicles for shows that you and I grew up with, Jeff Gilbert, uh, George Barris, for Universal Studios' 1994 feature motion picture, which was probably one of the motion pictures of that year that most people would be glad to say they missed. Uh, that was the one with Roseanne Barr. Unfortunately, Barth. I saw it. You did see it. <laughs> of course. I still have PTSD. Yeah, I bet you did. Uh, yeah, I remember that one uh as prehistoric trauma disorder yeah pre prehistoric thank you very very good jeff gilbert is with us cbs news radio automotive expert and analyst host of the car chronicles and also reporter for cbs news radio in detroit wwj news radio 950 and i want to ask you about the rides i mean you made a good point jeff this is a a show for families but it's also where the the big automobile automotive companies and it's not just the big three anymore they show off you know cool cars um concept cars a lot more of course their newest technology you can take a ride in the f-150 lightning the electrified f-150 what is what is it for people who've never been there i mean this is way bigger we are based here in grand rapids auto talk is it's way bigger than the show that happens at devos place what, how do you explain this show to someone who's never been there? I actually have to explain it more to people who have been there because this is really year one of a very different show. So back in the, uh, I think it peaked right before the Great Recession where this show was kind of the Super Bowl of auto shows. People came from all around the world. All of the auto companies exhibited there. They all tried to be, you know, more elaborate with their product introductions. Remember when they drove cattle down uh, the streets around the (laughs) convention center to to show off rams and things like that? Well, you know, those days are gone. So if, if you're used to something like that, Forget it. And it's probably going to be a little bit closer to what you saw at DeVos Place, but on a bigger scale. I Got mean, the, there'll be a little bit more polish on the exhibits. But unfortunately, car makers have decided individually they don't have to support every auto show. So in the case of Detroit, you have the Detroit Three who have their exhibits there. You also have Toyota and Subaru. Those are the only manufacturers that are there. But but the Detroit Auto Dealers Association decided that they want every model they can possibly get there. So they have made up for BMW, Mercedes, Volkswagen, Honda as companies deciding not to be there where the dealers have pitched in vehicles. So you'll see nicer displays from the Detroit 3, Toyota, and Subaru. And you'll see other smaller scaled back displays from other car makers. And uh, I'm involved with North American Car Truck and Utility of the Year. They gave us a, a display where we can show our semifinalists. So there are a couple of vehicles on that display, like the Lordstown Endurance pickup truck that will not be otherwise displayed at the auto show. So look around some of the nooks and crannies for some of these cars as well. Yeah, you are the uh, treasurer. You're one of the jurors who will vote on the North American Car, Truck, and Utility Vehicle of the Year. And uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because that that always gets a lot of press, uh, obviously, for good reason. And, uh, Jeff, I just want to ask for someone who is headed to the show, is it realistic to say you can see most of the show in a full day? 
Oh, oh yeah, e- easily in a full day. Uh, I Because the press days are different, they didn't have any of the public outdoor exhibits set up. Uh, Hart Plaza in Detroit was set up for the reveal of the new Mustang. So I'm not really sure exactly what that's going to look like when the public show is there. There'll be some things that were set up technology for the press that'll be different during public days. But yeah, I would say easily you can see things in one day. Y- you can probably get through the inside in a couple of hours and, and same thing with the outside big thing that's probably going to take time is especially if you come down on the weekend and want to do some of the ride-alongs and drive things generally there there are lines for those yeah jeff gilbert is with us from cbs news radio in detroit wwj news radio 950 he's also part of cbs news radio nationally you hear his reports on uh, cbs uh, news radio on the radio across the country and the car chronicles part of that as well the Car Chronicles, essentially uh, a, a short snippet, of a, a short feature, as we call in radio, and a, a feature that really is kind of a test drive. It's a, it's a lot more than that, and a feature that was started some 20-plus years. Is it 20 years now, Jeff Gilbert? 25. 25 years with your then-general manager, Rich Homburg, at WWJ, and, and the... Did you know it was going to get picked up for uh, by the CBS News Radio Network, or how did it all happen? Oh, well, yeah, okay. Uh, I started the feature. We, we we were talking about me as a reporter moving to do more automotive stories, and we had a person who was a a reporter for automotive news who was a print person who did a one minute feature and he was getting closer and closer to retirement and I wanted to do more auto stuff. So I said to my management, well, Hey, why don't, why don't you just have me interview reporters from automotive news? I can wrap it in a nice radio segment. Mm -hmm. And they said, Oh, good idea, but we don't want to do that. You just do your own automotive feature. So it, it became a, a daily feature uh, about anything automotive. And it, it was also interesting, the uh, program director at the time, a gentleman named Ken Beck, who came up with the name Car Chronicles, we were kind of struggling with, with what the name was. And I, I think that was a really cool name. So I, I give him a lot of credit for doing that. He said, uh, you know, why don't you sneak into dealerships and ask to test drive vehicles so you can do at least one segment a week that's a test drive? And I started thinking about that and thought, well, yeah, that's cool, but the dealers are going to get wise to you kind of quickly Mm because I figure in 25 years, I've done 1,300 plus test drive segments and a dealer would notice you after a while. But I found out from other automotive reporters that, that car companies had fleets that They provided reporters with vehicles to do this. So it kind of worked out where the feature was anything automotive Monday through Thursday and a test drive on Friday. CBS, picking it up is probably not the right thing to say. I I kind of kept going to them because I done a lot of freelance for CBS and said, hey, you've got this weekend feed with a lot of features. Would you like me to do like one of my car chronicles? Pick the best one and do one for CBS for, for a weekend feature. And... I don't know that it, they pay me a whopping 25 bucks each. Uh, and <laughs> I think they had to really think hard before they wanted to invest that kind of money in some guy from Detroit. And they finally said, okay, yeah, let's do it. So then I was at KNX in Los Angeles where I knew the program director. And he said, oh, we would run it if you had two. So we could run one on Saturday and Sunday. So it evolved to CBS for, you know, a feature piece and a test drive piece. And then a few years ago, they said that they had demand for people who wanted to do it five days a week. So I expanded. I love it. Well, congratulations on, on a great run and continued run with the Car Chronicles. And most importantly, uh, thank you for joining us on another episode of Michigan's Auto Talk podcast. Always enjoy our time together. And by the way, real quickly, 15 second review of the Mustang. What do you think? Uh, incremental, probably not big increases the interior is a lot nicer and you know a lot more variants of it so yeah they're, they're keeping it alive people who are mustang lovers are, are, are going to love this vehicle especially the special 
dark horse edition that they're doing that's going to get get a lot of buzz uh you could do a whole episode on the new ford mustang and, or Terrific. even the old ones and the mustang stampede they had down there we actually had ford on a previous episode for our listeners you can check out the inside story and how the ford mustang stampede came together as well but jeff gilbert always appreciate your insight your wisdom have fun at the uh, north american international auto show and it won't be long before we have to get you on to talk about the final Finalist for the North American Car and Truck and SUV of the Year. Okay, sounds good. I'd love to. We'd love to have you back. Thank you so much. Jeff Gelbert, our guest on this episode of Michigan's Auto Talk podcast uh, for co host Al Schwinkendorf and John Puick. I'm producer Phil Tower. Thank you so much for listening.